Welcome, folks, to my combat channel news. I'm the Yakman Ron Yakavetti. Fabiano Iha, the king of armbar. We're dressed down a little bit tonight. I'm just the casual my combat channel t-shirt. You should autograph that, and then we should put it on eBay. It's a little bit big for my size. I think I lost some weight. You did. You look good. Yeah. Look I don't good. know about that part, man. All right. Well, moving on to tonight's show, we've got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. We've got freelancing. We've got free balling. Oh, yeah. And we've got freedom of speech. Yes. And Ariana Celeste. Yes. Don't go anywhere. She have a lot to say. Yeah, she did. She's in an interesting spot with the specific stuff you're talking about. Oh, yeah. But first, we start out with lightweight standout, Eddie Alvarez, who's currently with Bellator, but might not be for too long. Not, according to him, the obvious, now that he's free and the UFC's interested, that's where he's going. He says the highest bidder gets him. Yeah, he's right. But again, he is in a good, very good position. Every fighter like to be in that position. It's like when you end your contract and you end your contract winning. Because yeah. sometimes what the promoters do is that when you don't want to sign, uh, when you don't want to renew your contract, they want to make sure that you fight somebody that can beat you. So that way, when you go to renegotiate your contract, you kind of like your head on, yeah, just, you know, take me back, you know. Now he's like, what's up, you know? Show me the number. Would it be a different... Show me the money! Would it be <laughs> you should have been in that movie. Um, would it be a different dynamic if he still had the title? Because he lost the title to Mike Chandler. Then he's he... won two in a row. Would they not be as easy to let him maybe see what he wants to do? Well, it's different. When you have the title, they don't let you uh, end up your contract holding the tire. Right. They don't do that. They, they renegotiate the contract before you, know, the, you, you go, you put your tire like on the line. On the line. So that's why he end up, you know, finish his contract and uh, and you know, Glocky that he won his last fight. So anyway, let's see. He have a good relationship with Bellator. He's 24, uh, 28, 28 years old. He He's is. 24 and three on a mixed martial art, and he was the first Bellator champion. Right. Important thing. You know, and he have a good relationship with the owner, but again, money always talk and right. the UFC is the one that have more money in the bank as we speak so they do it. Bellator backed by Viacom which adds to the depth of their wallet for one yeah. and for two it's not who has the most money that will get Eddie Alvarez I think it's who's willing to spend the most money UFC might not want to pay what he thinks they should mm -hmm. and if Rebney comes up with the bread and he doesn't he may end up staying in Bellator. I hope he stay in Bellator just because, you know, like that's what people know him, you know, that's why right. he got a good relationship. And again, it's not always about money. If you're a fighter, it's not all about money. I fought in Pride and I got trade, you know, in Pride like a king. You know, I love the organization. I used to, you know, they don't, they're not on the map anymore, but right. I used to love to fight for them. So UFC is great, but again, you know, they got too big and sometimes they don't have a chance to take care of all the fighters that He's under right. umbrella, so. Yeah, a little anyway. bit of a surprise to me that he's been off their radar as long. He was with Elite XC back when I was there, and, and I knew he was going to be a prominent lightweight, so um, we'll see where he goes. Anyway, um, let's uh, also talk about UFC. Again, 153 happened, and uh, like always, right after the fight, you're at home, you just turn the TV off, and that's it. For the fighters, they have to deal with the suspension. Yeah. You know, they get suspended for all kind of different things. You got caught a couple of days. If you hurt your arm, a couple of days. So almost the whole fight card, Gets besides Anderson yeah. Silva. It was like a bad day in a bad school. Everybody was getting suspended. Yeah. Uh, Texiera, Maldonado, uh, 180 days following the weekend's fight. Other people, Bonner suspended for 45 days. Marcelo, Cristiano Marcelo, 45 days. Madadi, 30 days. I mean, it is really almost the whole roster. Yeah, like it's always like that, folks. If you're at home and right after you watch the fight, and if you see somebody got damaged, believe me, that fighter is gonna be out the game for a little while. Doesn't mean he cannot. He he, he still can train. Right. He's just he's not allowed to fight on the commission show for what else time that he got suspended. So how detrimental is that to him financially when they, you know, when they're fighting for a living? Well, but doesn't affect you too much because if you notice nobody kind of like fight 
in like in 30, like after 30 days right. in a big event. It's take take at least you know two to three months to go back. So right. anyway, that that doesn't kind of affect you too much, but does. Yeah. Speaking of coming back or not and being affected or not, uh, Misha Tate looking to stage a comeback, but for a period of time after the, the loss to Ronda Rousey when she mm -hmm. had damaged her arm from not tapping, uh, she had contemplated apparently not coming back at all. That would have been a loss to MMA. I think. Oh, yeah. She's a great yeah. fighter, she tough fight she was excited. in, but yeah. you know, I think she's great for the sport. It is, it's, again, if you folks don't know, she's a very good submission uh, um, fighter. She, most, she won most of her fights uh, by armbar, and by, she got by, by what? By Amba. I don't I even know what you that say is. that. I wanted to. Yeah, I'm doing that from the bottom of my heart. I she can hear Amba. it. I and hear also, it. when she got defeated, she got defeated by Amba, and she didn't tap, hurt her arm pretty bad, and then uh, like she recent just did a trip to Brazil. Right. And she and stayed for a while. She stayed for a little while. Of course, probably doing a lot of more groundwork there. Yeah. So and she wants to avenge her losses to Caitlin Young, Sarah Kaufman, and Ronda Rousey. So hopefully we, she'll get a chance to avenge, or at least try to, those three fights. You know that she changed her nickname from Takedown to, to Cupcake. Cupcake? Yeah. Huh? Which uh, little people know that uh, that was actually my nickname in high school. Cupcake. Well, I'm not surprised. Sounds better to me. Sounds better to her, but you're not surprised. It's like I don't see that very often. People change the nickname. Yeah, you know? I've like not seen that I, I, I was not, I was trying not even change my haircut. Yeah. When I used to fight, so people can recognize me. It's not like I have too much option, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to bow to like a less bow a little bit. Understood. But, yeah, but I, that's the idea. Is that you know, like you keep your same name, you keep the way you look. So that people can can kind of recognize you always, yeah. you know. If you, one day you hair, another like one day you call this, one day you call that. King you know? of the ankle lock, king, king of the knee mark. Yeah. Okay. Welcome back, folks, to my combat channel news. We're back as we promised. Oh yeah, we're so back. And we're going to start off with uh, this is a fighter you're really impressed with. We've talked about him before. Well, like on these days when you got twenty. 20 and 0 on MMA, or either you'll be fighting, you know, on the small little shows, right. nobody. But I don't think that's his case. Yeah, Alison, Alexander Sarnowski. Sarnowski, yeah. <laughs> he got 20 <laughs> and 0. And, and on his lightweight, he's coming to Bellator 77. People were excited to see how he's going to do. He's, uh, I look over his record. He's um, got uh, 11 submissions, 6 knockouts, and 3 fights by decision, that means he is an exciting fight. Pretty well-rounded guy. Again, 20-0, and, uh, and, and people say this a long time in boxing, if somebody had a record that was that extensive with no losses, well, they're fighting tin cans, they're fighting cans on the way up, whatever, but but not everybody who starts a career in combat sports gets undefeated to 20-0, and, 0, and they no. all fight low-tier guys until mm -hmm. they step it up. So it's reasonable to say that that says something about how good he is. He yep. trains under Alexander Shlomenko, and there's a certain level of, uh, of cultural pressure to maybe take over the, the crown of you know what Fedor was. Yeah. And you guys know better that besides the Brazilian, Russians, they're very tough too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> besides the Brazilian. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering, that caveat had to Yeah, be. now like, you know, if you go back in the history, you know, Oleg right. Tartarov was a you know, Russian Correct. guy, very tough, and, and, keep, and keep going, yep. and keep going, and keep going, and keep going. You know, it's not, uh, I never heard about a, a Russian uh, guy, a fighter, that was, uh, you know, uh, not certain tough. Cultural pressure, and yeah. same thing in professional boxing, Mexican fighters, yeah. tough as it gets, there's a certain pressure to, to live up to that. Yeah, I think it's the whole, uh, you know, uh, cold, cold weather and uh, vodka make it tough. <laughs> we'll have to test that out and see, but... Nonetheless, 20 no, an impressive record. Uh, we'll see what he does at the next Bellator anyway, show. Anyway, let's talk to something like a way more exciting, a way more uh, enjoying. Well, you're going from to cold see. to hot now, aren't oh, you? Oh, you're going to cold to hot. Cold, to I light. know where you are. Yes. Yeah. So, Ariana Celeste. Yes. She is the ring girl, one of the most beautiful ring girl, let's you know, say that, yeah, yeah. from UFC. Uh, that's her right there. Uh, we need, we're gonna need to see that picture on the whole screen. Sorry, it's like she, okay. It's yeah, a, we're gonna the need important to see that part picture. of the cutout. It says DNA time because yes, there you go. There we go. That's because if she sees a lot of guys at the weigh-ins who have to drop the towel and the underwear, and they're and butt she naked and, behind them. You know. And so she's the DNA. If, if you don't know what that is, um, 
research. Do an interview. Google. Yeah, Google that. Google that. So anyway, so let's take a look at some of the picture of like, her right behind the scene. And yeah. let's see what's going on in her mind. Yeah. And another picture, please. There you there go. There you go. Yeah. That one's for sure. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> that's shiz. Just in case it needed to be said, um, that in no way shows any um, any affiliation with Walmart, even though there was a little smiley face on top no. of the... So anyway, let's go uh, like a little, uh, uh, how say, uh, back back in the day, let's talk about, uh, back in the days, uh, the waiting is to be private. That's mean not open to the public. It was right. to be there, just the, you know, the, the two fighters and the, the coach and the manager and the people affiliated with the event. So we used to go ahead and use this psychological thing against the other fighter that myself, Tito, used to do that and a couple other fighters. So basically like on the time that we're supposed to, to weigh, weigh in, in, we used to drop naked. You're not gonna do that now, are naked, you? Naked in front of the fighter and kind of look the guy in the eye, you know, naked and say, it's like, okay, I'm here. It's like. Somehow, if the fighter is not very like strong, mentally strong, he start to get himself uh, a little bit afraid of you from that point. Doesn't mean the size, you know, that it's not about the size, it's just about the attitude. Could you say that to the camera, to the ladies that are watching, just in case they need to hear that it's not about the size? It's, not, it's not about the size, it's how about, you know, how you use it, the technique. <laughs> it's all about... Yes. Yeah. So right. anyway, <laughs> uh, we also so affiliate to that. Go ahead. Let's go to the Waterway Top 10 Countdown. All right, we'll go to the Waterway Top 10. And then we we'll talk more about that. Hey, everyone. I'm Erin Gills, and this is your Top 10 Welterweight Division. At number 10, we have Jake Shields. And number 9, we have Rory McDonald. Number eight is Josh Koscheck. And at number seven, we have Martin Kampman. Number six is Jake Ellenberger. And at number five, we have John Fitch. Number four, Johnny Hendricks. Number three, we have Nick Diaz. At number two, we have Carlos Condit. And at number one, the champion, George Rush, St. Pierre. Thank you for watching. I'm Aaron Gales, and that was your top 10 welterweight division. Okay, off. Oh, I'll put my pants back. There you go. Are you good? After I did the whole uh, the, 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 the scene weigh about the waiting naked here. For real quick, before we go to break, I want to ask you, you said uh, how the weigh-ins is like an event now. It used to be private. Did you ever think that would happen is it surprising to you so when you see like the weigh-in sells out like, 5, a, like a concert yeah. like people show up to watch yeah. guys get on a scale slim fast can't do that is that surprising to you very surprised very surprised because it was very hard to even get you know 10 people there just to see myself naked <laughs> <laughs> but now different story now you're now selling different tickets story. Yeah, exactly. lining up anyway. all right well when we come back you can line up and uh, maybe he'll get naked in the next segment maybe. no promises and if he is, you probably will see an empty chair sitting right here. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back, folks, once again. My Combat Channel News. Still close on. Still close on. Huh? Who stayed and watched just in case that wasn't going to happen? Forgot about this is not a cable show. This is a network. Yeah, we have to keep it clean, even if we don't want to. Here we go. Speaking so, of clean, whew, John Jones. In the press conference, uh, a press conference with him and Chelsea, and now coaches 
of the next Ultimate Fighter season. They'll be fighting. Chael gets his wish. Yep. Um, but interesting enough, before they even get a chance to fight, John Jones finds a way to silence Chael Sonnen. That's almost impossible. I, I, I was so, so surprised about that because I, I think that was the, you know lucky shot. <laughs> yeah. Almost impossible well, to maybe do. he's using his money to find out, you know, somebody to write, you know, write stuff for him. Yeah, he's, he's doing what politicians clearly do. He yeah. got someone to write him some good stuff. And he, he appears like, we, we got one. He brings up one. the idea of TRT, which is testosterone replacement therapy, which was uh, the, That's the suspension that, that Sonnen got in trouble for, for having uh, an illegal substance in his system. Yep. Uh, the therapy basically takes, as, as men age, your testosterone level drops. Um, so to sustain peak levels when you're at your best athletic ability, uh, it keeps it elevated, whereas normally as you age it would drop down. Um, and for some people it makes them maybe even more enhanced than they would normally be. So that's what Sonnen was busted for. He brings it up on the conference call and he asks him, are you in good shape on or off TRT? And Sonnen goes, well, let's get off the subject. Jones continues to, to talk about how terrible it is and says, you know, I'm sure I would be happy-go-lucky like I was 20 if I was doing it, you know. and and Chell Sonnen goes, no comment. Just, just wait. That's gonna be a bazaar. It's gonna be a bazaar. Yeah. It's gonna be fun to watch and just to figure out who's, you know, the better, blah, blah, blah. It's you like think, a, back to high school. You think on the Ultimate Fighter when they start, you know, the coaches barbs at each other, they take yeah. steps. Do you think that that's gonna be like the ace in the hole for Jones? Like anytime Chell starts getting to him, getting the best of him, making him look bad, he's gonna go, TRT. Just to <laughs> kind of like shut him down. Well, he, he, I guarantee you that he's gonna have answer next time. He just got, you know, he got himself caught with the hands down. Yeah. You know, he will find something to, you know, to comment that one. So, I believe anyway, that. Rick Franklin against Kung Lee in Masao. That is an, in, yes, in, 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 right, in China. In China. UFC China show. Um, yep. We talked about this earlier off we camera, did. the matchup. We did. Really two ways to look at it. Did. What was your take? Well, my take is Rick Franklin, he beat Vanderlei Silva twice. Kung Lui lost for Vanderlei Silva when Vanderlei was not in the best of his career. Okay, my opinion that Kung Lui didn't, the, did not look good on his last fight. Correct. Okay, He looked like a way older than 40. Okay, yeah. at, at least not like uh, physically, I'm talking about. Okay, so um, if Rick Franklin walking. I'm again, guys. When we we hear when you're talking about you know uh, what I think about the fight, we we going on the direction that both fighters is gonna walk in a hundred percent. Right. They're okay? gonna show up. They're gonna show up a hundred percent. So Rick Franklin for me has a way more chance on this fight than Kong Lee. Not like you as your opinion on that. So yeah, I am. Um I think they both have to show up. If one of them does not show up 100%, I think that guy is immediately at a disadvantage. Yeah. That said, both 100%, I think Kung Lee, like Machida, uh, like Anderson Silva, poses a very unorthodox striking style, coming from different angles, a lot of movement, a lot of lateral movement. The target is never stable enough to counter it. I think unless Franklin can close the distance and disallow him from doing that, he's going to have comparable trouble that he had against Anderson with a guy that unorthodox. And both good wrestlers, so uh, the grappling may not be as much of an advantage for Franklin. Uh, so I think last time Kung Lee was very movie-minded. He was filming, and I don't think he showed up in the best shape. But if he is on point, I think the style, comparable enough to Machida Silva, makes it difficult for Franklin. Back in the days when he just when he just uh, signed uh, he um, from Strike Force, and we just, right. he signed with Strike Force. We contact my manager, contact Strikeforce to try set my, you know, myself up with him to fight Kung Lee. Kung Lee, and he never set that fight. That was back in the days. Doesn't mean that he was a fake. It was not that. It was just it was a not, not very not very good match, you know, match for him. I looked and that up. And you know that he's a very good wrestler. Yes, he's a okay, very good wrestler. A very People good don't wrestler. know that because okay, And he have a very strong legs. Yes. Okay, but his defense from from submission at that time was not as sharp maybe as today. So. I Googled during the commercial that uh, wouldn't sign the contract to fight Fabio and Ehan. It turns out it was because you weighed in naked. He and he was he afraid. He <laughs> again, I, I, believe I can probably like afraid him up on that, <laughs> you know? Anyway, Nick Diaz is back to yes. UFC. What? It's and not, I love Nick Diaz, come on. Yeah, but he's great. Come on, like, you know, he throw, 
he got this whole thing with Dana and basically like at the end of the day, he even said that he was not interested in fight anymore. Yeah. But what people are keeping forgetting is that they have bills to pay. Yeah. And that's and why they're coming back. So, some of which is to, uh, is, is to probably for medical marijuana. Yeah. And that costs money. So he's got to work, clearly. Um, yeah, so he wants to come back. He is a top level guy, clearly at welterweight. He wants to be at the top of the heat, but Dana says, hold on. Hold on, yeah. You got to win at least one or two fights at welterweight. Then, yeah, he goes, what are you, what, are you smoking something? <laughs> You're not starting at the top. Condit loses to St. Pierre. That could be a rematch that he could avenge. Uh, Campman Hendricks, the loser of that, could also be a Diaz fight. Both good Diaz, fights. You know, we love you, okay? You are a very exciting and good fighter. Just stay away from that natural. Yeah, stay hurt. away from the <laughs> reefer. And then come back strong, and you will be having a chance for the title soon. Yes. Speaking of coming back strong, we thank you for watching my combat channel. Good night, guys. We'll be back tomorrow, and hopefully we come back strong. If not, uh, you can take a night off and then watch us the next night. It's reasonable. <laughs>